I'm going to share with you five ways in which you can make money as a freelancer in tech. And then also seven ways how you can scale that up. Want to make money as a freelancer but still studying or not ready to quit your job? Well, you can do it on the side. I've been a full-time freelancer for over 10 years. Making a jump can be scary. You might feel you don't have the necessary experience yet. And freelancing means you do not have that regular income every month as a permanent employee. So a good way to start freelancing is on the side. This is actually high gain and low risk. Are you thinking of taking that step? Then here is my advice to make freelancing on the side profitable as possible for you. I want to break this down into two categories. Wait for the second category because most people are not doing it and you could really stand out from this. Tip number one, small startups often have websites built for them, but these are not hosted online for their clients to benefit from the information that they've got on their website. And with so many hosting providers available, it can be beneficial, but also scary for people to understand how to do this. So if you got familiar with some of the popular hosting providers and offered to set up the hosting for business and this adds so much value to them so they can get their website in front of their potential clients. And for you, this is highly repeatable because once you've hosted a static website on one provider, you could host 10 websites on that same provider and it's going to be very repeatable. Tip number two, other times there are businesses who have their website hosted online but without a custom domain and without a custom email which doesn't look professional. Setting up domains with emails for these types of businesses is a great way to get them not only online but for you to start your freelancing journey as this is quite a small project. Similar to the hosting, it's quite a small project so you're not taking months and months of work on. It's something you could probably do in a day. Therefore, it is also beneficial to you and low risk at the same time. Tip number three, stepping up the game a little bit, giving you a bit more work, build some web templates that you give away for free and have them open source on GitHub. This is a great way to showcase your expertise and it's a great way to stand out. But if people want to add their data to those templates or customize it further, then you would charge for this. And you could also have some premium templates that you would charge for. And if you want to take on a bigger project, you can offer services like building a website or developing an app. I know people get hung up on languages, technologies, libraries and frameworks. My advice would be to use the right tool for the job and the one you're most comfortable with. Remember, you're there to fulfill the client's needs and not to experiment with new toys. For example, if you go to the mechanic with your car and your oil needs changing, the mechanic doesn't suggest you five different oil types for your car. You expect them to choose the most appropriate one as they're the expert. So in this case, you are the expert. So choose the right tool for the job and show how much value you can add to the client. Another service you could offer is manual automated testing. With so many great tools like Cypress for UI testing and Pangtum for API testing, there are so many projects missing the benefits, such as reducing bugs, deploying more often, and this is a great way you can add value to these projects for your clients. Okay. Now here for some of the ideas you didn't think of. There are amazing tools that you can learn and you could add value to your clients' projects. For example, Zap Proxy or Z Attack Proxy is a web app scanner used for penetration testing. So you could use Z Attack Proxy against API or website and check that they are secure. For example, Lighthouse is used to improve the quality of web pages. It can perform audits on performance, accessibility, SEO, and more. With whatever tool you decide to use, make sure you give your client a professional report at the end, not only with the results that the tool provides, but also your opinion on priority impact and some potential solutions. Here are some of the bonus tips I mentioned at the beginning that can help you stand out as a freelancer and allow you to charge the higher rate. Have consistent and regular communications. Just like open source, make sure you give context. Your clients are busy and they don't want to spend time guessing what you're trying to say or reading an essay. When something can be explained concisely, make it concise and include the relevant information. That was tip number one. Tip number two, document everything you do throughout the project. From plan planning to execution and confirming what has been done, as well as why technologies were decided to be used. The usual expression is the bus factor. Document in a way that someone else could take over the project if necessary without having to ask you anything. Many people do not do this and they try to appear indispensable to the client. However, I find it has the opposite effect. Clients like to continue to work with people who are transparent in how they operate and how they have achieved the end result. Tip number three, 
at the beginning, you might find you're undercharging and you're testing the pricing and also making a name for yourself. Once you have a few clients where you underpromise and over deliver, they will become your sales team and you can increase your rates as you get more in demand. After a few paid projects, be confident in what you charge. Don't offer a massive discount. Clients will think you overcharged them with the original price. Increase your prices gradually. Don't do big bang price jumps. Keep your first few projects small because you'll have lots of admin tasks when you're new to freelancing. And this is quite time consuming as you do research knowing what you need. So the first time you do them, it is a lot harder, but then once you've done them, you can tweak them and update them as needed. Some of the templates you might need are quoting, invoicing, and which you can use for your future projects and add to them and improve them as you need to. There are sites like Upwork or Fiverr, which is a platform for developers to offer services to their customers worldwide. I know these sites have a bad reputation of that the cheapest always wins. However, if you demonstrate that you focus on quality and you're super professional, this will make you stand out and it won't be a race to the bottom anymore. It'll be a race to the top. And remember, you don't need to do it alone. If you're anxious about starting out by yourself or you want to split the responsibility, then you could work on a project with a friend. For example, one of you could deal with the front end and the other one deal with the back end. With all of these options, no matter how great you are, people need to discover you. So remember to share what you're doing on socials, blog posts, YouTube videos, share behind behind the scenes, share your struggles, share your successes, share something that you've learned. I hope you get into freelancing. Let me know in the comments below if you would like to and what are some of your challenges. Also, while you're down there, give this video a thumbs up, hit subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell button so you get notified every time I post a video and go live.